Okay, we are here to show how to gross a femoral head. This femoral head has a fracture. Uh, can we sh can we show this femoral head? So here we have the undersurface of the femoral head, which is irregular and bloody, and that is the fracture site. Let's turn it around and show the articular cartilage. That is the part that um, articulates. Um, in the body, and the other side is the fracture side. Usually with a femoral head that has a fracture, they take out additional pieces of bone, which are the femoral neck bones, pieces of bones that are hemorrhagic, etc. So the first thing uh, one has to do is to properly describe these pieces, and we have dragon templates for that, and then we have to cut the bone to describe the uh, cut surface and make sure there are no tumors inside the, uh, inside the bone. Do you have anything else to add there? No. Nothing to add? Okay, so let's uh, show the, uh, a technique that one, uh, one uses for cutting the bone. This is, uh, what do we call this, John? The striker saw. Striker saw. There are other types of saws that one can use that uh, you're hoping to get. A band saw, top, tabletop. And if you ever get that, you promise you won't cut your finger off? Sure. Okay. This is a little bit safer, but the band saw is, is much better. You can get thinner sections. Yes, much thinner, much more efficient, and less time. Less time? Less time consuming, yes. Okay, let's try it. Are there any hazards to cutting this? Just the bone dust may fly up, so you may want to have protective equipment on, such as apron, apron, gloves, gloves, face shield, face shield, eye protection, eye protection, goggles, and you're getting your goggles and your okay. face shield. Okay, all right, and we are we are protected. Okay, so I will move back a little bit, and let's try it. cut through the entire uh, bone and we look at the surface and we're looking what are we looking for John in, in these, uh, on the cut surface any lesions or any lesions yeah so the obvious in a fracture we'll see some color changes at the, at the base where it's bloody or brown or maroon it's hemorrhagic and that's typical of a fracture site but uh, one can also get a pathologic fracture where it could be a fracture through a bone lesion. Um, so we're looking for um, uh, areas in the bone that look a little bit different. Here we see the bone is just pretty much uniformly the same color and texture, yellow, uh, with no uh, areas that look, look different. So based on our gross inspection, um, this looks like a run-of-the-mill fracture and we'll take some sections. Which sections will we take? This bone. I usually cut it straight across the same okay, yep. procedure so we get one cross section. So we get a cross section, one to involve the surface, this white cartilaginous surface, just to show that. And then we get a cut section uh, to take um, uh, the area of the hemorrhage of the fracture site, just to exclude microscopically exclude other you know, possibility of a, of a metastatic lesion. And such. Then we'll also take sections of the additional fragments of bone too as well. Um, and then what do we, how do we submit bone, John? Do we have to? We have to. We have to properly fix it. Fix it. Fix it first. Then so then we'll transfer it into decalcification. 
solution so that it decals properly so that the, we fix it first so that the bowling does not rot any further okay. and then we'll take it out and we'll submit the tissue. Okay, so we'll do three cassettes for this? Yes, most likely. Okay. Alright, so how will you make another section? You'll use... Um, we'll have to cut the section again now. We'll take it the same exact way I just did to get a thin section so that and we'll fix that properly and then decalcify it. Okay, so use the strike a star again? Yes. Alright, so I'll film this just for a few brief seconds and then that will be it. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Alright, let's, let's see.